Brent has got a $48 price target on Twitter. It's a hold rating. We're at $50.91, Brent, right now. The offer price is circa $54. Why are we still at $50? I, do you think he's got it? There seems to be some skepticism still. Yeah, I mean, the stock's reflecting that element of can he get cut the gap, but we, we think this gets done. Uh, ultimately, there's a lot of things that have to happen at Twitter, and, and most of these things are probably done better in private. Uh, he's reportedly tweeted about the user interface, the usability, uh, turning the, the San Francisco headquarters into homeless shelter. And I, I don't think he, he meant that literally, but he's looking at productivity of Twitter employees, and it's among the worst of any of the Internet companies we cover. So I, I think ultimately the board right now uh, believes that from a technology perspective, Elon, hard to bet against him, as we say, DBAM, don't bet against Musk. Uh, we, we continue to think that he... Uh, can take some pretty uh, stringent actions here. Uh, and ultimately, what does he do in the aftermath of this? Does he move the company's headquarters? Does he, uh, in, you know, inflict a, a major headcount reduction? I mean, that those are all yet to be announced. But ultimately, I think uh, there's there's a lot of improvement. And again, I think this is, is better done privately. Mm. And again, from his perspective, I think he's a heavy user. So he, he has some great ideas that we've unpacked from his tweets that we think make a lot of sense. So uh, ultimately, the biggest issue comes down to price. And, you know, are they really going to agree to 5420 or can they get a different number closer to that? That uh, I think they, they, they would they would rather not take the 5420 and either round it yeah. to 55 or 56. Well, Elon Musk had said 5420 was his best and final offer, so it, I guess it's a matter of if he's willing to move or not. Brent, you talk about what can be accomplished by Twitter being private. Can it be accomplished with the current management team, or do you expect that Elon Musk would come in and shake things up? I think he changes it. I mean, he's already it, uh, expressed his disappointment with his team, and he said that he would rethink his investment based on his lack of confidence in the team. So I think you've seen some turmoil on the board. You've seen turmoil uh, in the upper ranks. You've obviously have a brand new team that's put in uh, at, the, at the top. And so I, my, my belief is Elon will probably end up just handpicking his, his team and putting uh, an additional team in is, is what I would think he would do, given what he said so far about his, his, his view. Now, part of that might just be a first pass. Who knows how much time he's actually spent with this team. Uh, so... I, again, I, I don't want to send fear and shock down the, the wave of, of the Twitter management team that everyone's going to be changed out. But I do think he'll probably end up having having a change out from from his from what he's already said is, is what you would imply from the what he's saying. Can, can Elon Musk get more from this than anybody else? Why did nobody else bid? I, I think, you know, it goes back to no one thought he would actually create a car that five of the 10 neighbors in my, my, hood, my neighborhood have, right? It, and he, from my view, uh, is a user interface design genius. Uh, you know, if you have a dog, you know what I'm talking about in the Tesla. Like, no, what other car has a dog mode where you can bring your dog to the grocery store and the air conditioning stays on, the locks are on, it says, hey, my dog's fine, it's in the car on the screen. I mean, the UI of the te Tesla is incredible. So he's... Take that analogy and, and apply it to Twitter. The, the UI looks like an old Ford. I mean, it's terrible. And so when you think about what he wants to do in terms of making the product more usable, more aesthetic, you know, he he is brilliant at doing that. And we think that he can he can make those changes. Uh, and, and effectively, if he creates a better user interface, more people come and then more advertisers want to come. So we'll, we'll see, uh, and, and obviously he's talked about a subscription model that, that he, he believes in, and, and he can go down that route. But I think when you think about it right now, when he's taking a private, obviously he said this, I'm not doing this for the financial outcome. I'm doing this because I believe that yeah. this is a, a product that we all need. And so, yeah. you know, no one really exactly knows, is he gonna run this financially or is he just gonna run it for, for making it the best product and he doesn't care what the expense is to get there? Yeah, he says this is about free speech, not about making money. I guess he already has plenty of it, at least on paper, Brent. Uh, do you think he'll face any regulatory headwinds? Say that he and Twitter actually come to an agreement. What is the likelihood that Capitol Hill takes issue? 
I think there'll definitely be an investigation and ultimately the, the challenge is he doesn't he doesn't have any other assets like this and and, and so uh, I, I would assume uh, again that you're going to want to hear about his plans for uh, a, a, you know an independent board to, to govern this obviously he has very strong views so you want the, the, the asset to be run by uh, you know by an independent board by an independent team that does the right thing for for his again his dream of what the story should be which is a twitter for everyone and that it becomes the the town hall square you can't have one person running it so i i think there's ultimately going to be some oversight but i think from a, a regulatory perspective jeffrey's uh desk believes that there's probably no big issue as it relates to this if yeah. it was microsoft or salesforce or another company bidding then we'd have a bigger issue but we, we don't anticipate I guess, I it'll guess. probably be a standard yeah, standard six I months guess that's why others, others haven't bid. Um, Brent, is it a zero-sum game between Tesla and Twitter, i.e., does his attention now focus here, and is that a negative for shareholders in, in Tesla? I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, he talked about this, the TED Talk, that, I mean, he lived for three years on the factory floor in, in a company that was near bankruptcy, and you could you could feel it in, in his his energy about, what was happening there and it feels like tesla's on a great footing i'm not the tesla analyst so i don't want to speak out of turn but it seems like they're on a really incredible trajectory and that ultimately he wants to own this asset but i don't think he wants to be the day-to-day -day. He, he i still think uh, in my assumption is tesla is is his primary focus uh, again uh, so I, I don't believe there'll be a distraction clearly with jack dorsey having gone through this with square and with tesla or with uh, twitter there's some concern uh, does he have the energy? But again, when you've seen, you know, two weekends ago, we counted, he, he, he tweeted 20 times about Twitter. Like, this is clearly an individual that has interests uh, in tech and, and not maybe interest in, in golf on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> so it <laughs> seems like he's got he's got a lot of the time and, and attention to this. And that that uh, ultimately with Tesla on a really good perspective uh, and a really good route right now, and it doesn't it doesn't seem like that would be a, a, a big concern. And the, the other thing, too, is, you know, Twitter's going to be private. Right. So he doesn't have to wake up every day and, and deal with us, uh, you know, asking him questions. <laughs> he can run it however he wants. So it's probably going to take a little less time. OK, finally, Brent, obviously it's tech earnings week as well. We're going to be getting results from a lot of companies, Twitter included. Uh, for the social media players, what is your expectation? What is the market looking like for them, considering they're very advertising reliant? And we've seen that subscriber growth in particular wasn't great for Netflix. I'm wondering what it would be like for these guys. Well, we think there's a headwind seasonal, season, from seasonality in, in advertising uh, right now we're facing. Uh, Snap called that out, that they were seeing 30 plus percent growth and, and, and expected that to moderate into the 20s. So I think. What we're seeing is good growth, but Q1 seasonality, we have supply chain issues, right? You can't get uh, new cars delivered to you on time. You've got all the overhang of what's happening in China. And, and then you have the, the global economy starting to show signs of, of maybe a slowdown. So advertisers are, are leaning a, a little less hard. So we think Facebook has a very difficult comp. They're gonna end up mm. probably being very conserved on the Q2 guide. And ultimately, you know, we don't know what the Twitter numbers are, but ultimately the fact that they're saying, hey, we're, we're going to accept this yeah. could be an indication that their financial results aren't that good either. That's one consideration here. Uh, but overall, the ad checks have been mediocre. Uh, we're coming off the pandemic hangover uh, and then all these other issues I, I mentioned. So it's not a great backdrop right now. The good news is a lot of these stocks have been hit really hard. You yeah. know, Facebook's trading at 13 times earnings, so it's not trading at a premium.